All right, so let's start. Uh, my name is Yaofun Long uh, from Flatter uh, uh, University and also Kakono University. Uh, so I'll be the uh, uh, chairman for this session this afternoon. It's, it's my uh, great pleasure uh, to have this opportunity uh, uh, serve for the committee, uh, for the uh, ICM. So the first speaker uh, this afternoon is Professor Hu Quanfang from Kaitonong University. Uh, his research interest is in algebraic and geometric topology differential geometry. Uh, Professor Fong has received uh, a number of uh, uh, prestigious awards in China. Uh, uh, for instance, he was a uh, Changjiang uh, professor and uh, national level distinguished professor. Uh, so I just named two. So the title of his talk is uh, Non Negative Curve Manifold and T Geometry. Before I conclude my uh, introduction, uh, so I'd like to present a gift from ICM uh, uh, Organization Committee uh, to the speaker. Yeah, it's my great pleasure to be invited to give this talk. What I'm going to talk about is a joint work, work with Custom Group and Gordon Hobson. The title is non negative curve the manifold and the piece geometry. And let's start with some classical example and a very like, brief overview on non negative curve the manifold. If we start with a compact amigo with a bimaran metric, it's classical, you can capture that the section of curvature in two directions, x and y, should be given by such a formula. It's like a quarter by the knee break, in the knee edge break, is then take a square. So therefore, therefore this guy is non-negative for whatever by invariant metric when the group T is, uh, is compact. And similarly, if you consider all homogeneous space of compact type, where H is a closed subgroup of a compact knee group T, if you take the by invariant metric, then from the O'Neill formula, you can conclude the similar states, namely the section of the curvature is non negative right? However, you should notice that if the rank of the knee group is at least two, then uh, there are some directions where the curvature vanish means there are some zero di curvature directions, right? Because if x, y commutes, then this guy gives you zero, right? So, so that means there are much less examples of a um, manifold with a positive section curve. I mean, roughly. Okay. So similarly, in geometry, if you take a so-called bi quotient, namely if you consider a subgroup in the product of two knee groups, say T cross T, you take the bi quotient, which means you, you may uh, do uh, the conjugation to the, the product from two different directions, right? You take a H to be a pair of elements in the group H, which is C inside here, and then you, you, you multiply by H1 from left, and then you multiply by H2 minus from the right, then you, I mean, you consider the orbit space. In case this guy is a manifold, then this will have also a non-negative curvature. This is so-called bi quotient, which gives you much more interesting examples in Riemannian geometry. Okay, so the standard example, for example, for manifold with positive curvature inside the sphere and the space, uh, spherical space forms, namely you consider the sphere quotient by some uh, free subgroup, a free action from a subgroup in the orthogonal group, and the, then otherwise, I just uh, you know standard example like the range one symmetric space, you may have there. Compact project space or continuity or k plan as a standard, rather standard example. And let me give you one non-standard example: a family, namely a so-called out of water space, 
you just consider this vector 2 knee group as U3, you push it by a family of circles inside the maximum torus seeking inside this SU3, then all of this guy, whenever PQ are co prime, a pair of co prime integers, you, you may have this seven dimensional homogeneous space. Actually, all of them were at the mean, uh, possibly even pins in the section of curvature metric, where from topology you may notice that these seven, seven dimensional manifold, they are all simply connected and have the second homotopy group to be integer and the third homotopy group to be a, a, a torsion group of order given by this formula. So therefore, this does give you an infinite many examples of seven dimensional manifold with secondary curvature positive, even pinch. Okay. So that classically, let's just recall like, uh, like some very background, very uh, basic background. Like from the classical corresponding formula and uh, the famous work of Richard Hamilton, you know, in dimension 2 and the dimension 3, actually positively curved the manifold are exactly the space form. You don't have much more than that. So this gives you a complete picture for manifold with positive uh, curvature. And in high dimension, the famous Gromov theorem tells you that every big numbers for whatever i is uh, strictly up bounded by some constant which is depending only on the dimension of the manifold. Here, n indicates the dimension. So that's like a universal constant. You also have some universal bound for your topological quantity. And uh, more, more general, uh, fairness results due to actually that I think that's, uh, that's uh, from Chico's thesis. And Chico also analyzed that in some special case, which proved that in even dimension, there are only finite many third pins in the manifold up to give them also. That means there are only finite many topological type. Here's so called delta p, that means the curvature bounded between two positive constants with ratio to be a delta. And what Ron and I proved, and also independent by Petroni and Tushman, we got some kind of all dimension version of Chico Weinstein's theorem. Namely, in all dimension, there are only finite many, also similarly connected and pay to finite delta p to the manifold up to deeper models. Here, as from the example, if I just indicated that this, this condition, pi 2, finally is, is necessary because there are infinite many seven manifold where the, the pi 2 to be integer, right? So, so that's, a, that's like a, a very brief. So people are really are trying to look for more examples for manifold with positive curvature or even non negative curvature and or otherwise you try to look for a classification of, a, of such a category of manifold. But unfortunately it's very different and it seems, uh, seems far away. So I'm going to basically talk about some special manifold which admits a kind of special action, so-called polar action. The, as you will see, this really is kind of a geometric, uh, trying to get a geometric characterization of knee theory and symmetric space theory from pure Riemannian geometric point of view. Now we consider a compact knee group which is acting on a Riemannian manifold which is assumed to be complete. And such an action is called a polo, means you may have a global immersed section, means a connected complete uh, immersed sub-manifold sigma such that this sigma will meet every orbit. Means if you consider the the image of sigma in your orbit space, like m over t, which is subjective uh, onto. So in other words, if you move this sigma by using t, then you get every point in yeah, m. Right. And moreover, because we are geometers, so we will assume this section to be perpendicular to your every orbit. Of course, this, uh, I mean, if, you, if this is perpendicular at somewhere, then it will perpendicular everywhere. That's from geometry. You can see that. Okay, we will call such a sigma to be a section. In that case, this sigma is a flattened manifold. We, we will call this action to be hyperpole. This terminology was uh, first, by the way, introduced by uh, uh, Dick, Dick Bonnet and uh, Tony Antwerp, uh, yeah, theoretically, and also actually even, even more, um, uh, much before their work, I think, uh, somehow in the work of Bode Samson. There are some similar, uh, similar things, but not with uh, this terminology. Okay, 
for such an action, we, we can introduce some uh, basic environment, so called the polar group. You just consider all elements of your D group T, which keep this sigma invariant, so, so called the normalizer of the, your of the section sigma, and then your model you're modeled by the kernel of such a of such a, such a uh, group acting on the sigma. Means this Z T of sigma, every element there will keep uh, 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 keep sigma invariant point of isolation. So this is the long subgroup inside, so then therefore you get a, a, a such a polar group. Actually this group in general is a final group or discrete group in general. Okay. Notice that this sigma is always totally less. That's from the definition you can, uh, it's not that hard to uh, derive. Let's give you some very basic and simple example. You, for example, you just consider that rotation group acting on uh, your round sphere S2 with fixing these two core points. Then the sigma, a section sigma just like the great circle passes through these two, two core points. And the polar group in this case is just a Z2. And uh, this is a bigger family, namely every cohomogeneity one actually is polar. So called cohomogeneity one just means the orbit space is one dimension, or in other words, means the principal orbit is called dimension one inside there. Because if you have a normal geodesk, which is perpendicular to your principal orbit, you can always extend your, your normal geodesk everywhere. So that's why this guy is always born. And this example, I think everybody knows, if you consider a compact needle acting on its knee algebra, right, with, uh, by using the adjoint action, right, on. and then this is a polar action. Actually, the section just to be exactly to be the maximum IB in sub algebra, and then the polar group is our familiar Y group for the knee group. So this means our this kind of definition or this kind of terminology is really trying to get a more general theory than knee theory. One more example, if you consider, for example, as an orthogonal group acting on the symmetric M by M matrices through this uh, conjugation, then in this case, uh, this is polar action, and the set is exactly the set of diagonal matrices, and the polar group is the permutation group, which uh, permit, uh, permutates these diagonal matrices of n letters. Okay. A very famous result due to Cass and Dabok, which says the following, if you have a compact group, represent, linear representation, say T representation of the homomorphism to SON, which is a polar. Polar just means what I mentioned there, right? It's, but, uh, but here, in particular, you just consider this linear action on your round sphere, right? because you have this uh, representation. Then this guy is polar if and only if this action or this representation is always equivalent to uh, one isotopy representation of some symmetric space. Because for one symmetric space, you may have an isotopy representation. Then we're given to you exactly like this two set, two, two set of representation are exactly equivalent. So this means you have you can have a complete classification for polar representations by the work of Katz and Dada Plaza. Okay. What I wanted to talk about the first rigidity result is we can have a kind of a nonlinear version of Katz data here. Namely, if we have a Riemannian manifold, so-called polar manifold with a polar group T acting on it, right? And if the sectional curvature is positive, and the manifold is simply connected, well, you can always assume that, otherwise it can pass to universal cover, right? And assume the cohomogeneity is at least a two, means the orbit space is at least a two-dimensional, then we can show this manifold has to be standard one, is either sphere or this rank one space, and the action has to be linear action, reduced from linear action. So therefore, I, we consider this guy, this theorem, as a, a nonlinear version of Katz's data theorem. Because our condition is only assume section curvature to be positive. And in their theorem, they assume that the wrong sphere already is a constant curvature one. Uh, okay. So just two remarks. First, for cohomogeneity one, Actually, this theorem can never be true. That's why this condition is necessary because most of the out of one space 
we talked about actually they had lead isometric cohomogeneous one actions. They have positive curvature metric and symmetry connected, so can can never be true. And the second, it has has been an important topic to construct the cohomogeneous one manifold with positive curvature metric or Einstein metric. And I think this we did this year actually actually turns you that it's hard to say it's impossible if you try to use this high cohomogeneity method to construct a metric with positive section curvature. Actually, my collaborator, like Kasten Group with the Wolfgang Zinner, they tried to construct this cohomogeneous one, positive curved metric. They succeeded in seven dimension, right? But in high dimension, uh, yeah, for high cohomogeneity, that's impossible from this theory. And this is uh, actually one another motivation why we wanted to show this rigidity uh, result. Okay, so now let's try to very briefly indicate the idea. Uh, behind how can you how can we show such a rigidity theorem? Everything we wanted to use a, a very big theory, so called the Tis theory, Tis theory. Actually, this is a very powerful tool in algebra and uh, and the group theory. Right. Let's just say record that a spherical cox complex, which roughly say is just a tiny of your own sphere by aspect <coughs> in synthesis with a transitive action by a reflection group downing. Such a group downing actually is a so-called Cox group. It's a kind of Y group in this case. In this spectrum, specific case, it's, a, it's exactly the Y group for the new group. A T theory actually is a, is a kind of simpler complex. It's just like a simpler topology, where which can be written as a union of apartments, where a, a, one apartment, what's an apartment? A building, of course, we know a building consists of many apartments. And an apartment is exactly a cost complex, just like a tiny of your round sphere. So, therefore, a chess building is just like a union of many of such spheres, which considered as a, as a chamber complex or as a similar com complex, which satisfies these two conditions. Namely, if you have two n dimensional synthesis inside this similar complex X, then you may find some common apartment which contain these two guys. That means for every two synthesis, you may find one round sphere which is connected there. That's kind of like a connectivity cycle. And the second means if you have two synthesis which both lie in two different apartments, like A and A prime, then you may find a simplicial isomorphism which move one to another like a kind of homogeneity that's really roughly say. Okay. The basic example is like a flag complex of in your projective geometry, which uh, is a particular spherical T theory. Actually that's exactly the, the original motivation why T wanted to develop this T theory. We exactly wanted to generalize this projective geometry to cover every type negro to get even like uh, over over a PID field or over a final field or whatever. And for a symmetric space of a non-compact type, like T over K, means T is a non-compact negro, you divide it by a maximum compact subgroup inside, and we know that the infinity of the symmetric space, right, you may talk, because this is a non-positive curve, you may talk about the infinity of this guy, which actually is a spherical type of T theory. Actually, this idea behind was the original first prove for the famous most power rigidity to use the t theory to use this idea to prove that rigidity is zero. Okay, we call that actually a spherical t theory is really a cat, zero, cat one geodesic space where you may see every need because that's a simple linear complex you may talk about the need of that one every need is really just like a, a sub building there. And a very important theorem of t is just the third theorem which bridge up somehow from this combinatorial topology scenes to algebra means the teeth buildings of rank at least three of the irreducible one are in one-to-one -one correspondence with isotopic algebraic group over some field K so here K could be, could be any field so now for whatever teeth building of rank higher enough you may get some algebraic object so otherwise uh, other 
On the other hand, for whatever algebraic group, you may have a geometric things like this combinatorial simulation complex to describe it. So that's exactly that. A big theory for that. Okay, let's move back a little bit to, to talk to talk about how can we how can we uh, derive a kind of a disability from a polar action from a, this geometric object. An easy but a very basic lemma due to Dick Van Eyck and Julian Turn is the following. For whatever polar manifold, no curvature condition, just remind, uh, then the slice representations are always polar representations. Right? So because the earlier results we talk about it due to cast and data, whether well, this slice representation will give you an isotropy representation of a symmetric space. And therefore you may have some spherical building. Because for whatever symmetric space, you may have a corresponding building that's from T theory, you, you know that one, right? Okay. So back to our situation, when we have a many polar action on a manifold with positive curvature, then I think that the starting point in this uh, in this in the proof of our rigidity theorem is that under this condition we may show that this section is either a sphere or a real project space where the polar group we talk about is always a crystallographic cost group or is quotient by a center Z2 inside there. Of course, we know many of these cost groups does not have a center. So if this guy is uh, RPK, then it means the center has to be Z2. That's some special type, right? like uh, C type or half of D type, for example. Okay. So this means, yeah, roughly say, for such a polar manifold, you may have many, many of these. This is either sphere or this real projective space embedded in there. As we just briefly mentioned before, for a case building, you may have many, many of these apartments which it looks like a, a, tiny of a, a tiny of the sphere, right? So that means in case of, the, of this section is a sphere, it looks really like a kind of, a, a kind of special thing, right? Of course, you have to, uh, you have to show uh, many things. Yeah, let's, let's continue. Okay, so this, from here, we may motivate one definition, means a polar action on such a manifold is for the irreducible or reducible according to this Cox group action on that this section is reducible or irreducible because this action is linear. We may talk about that. What does that mean? It's reducible, right? right? Okay, now we wanted to try to associate a so called temporal system to your polar action. Now, suppose we have a polar action on your manifold M where with open space where we know that all this space is exactly the same thing from this section divided by the Cox group action, which is isometric to a spherical, a spherical type simplex, simplex C inside there. So from here we may, there is a correspondence from such a polar action, we may consider this M as a unit of all this type of, of synthesis, right? Because for whatever element T in your group, you use the T acting on your on one synchronized you make another. So because the property for, for the polar action we know every section where you can set with your edit always. So that means this union will, will be a cover of your manifold M. So therefore we have one way to think about your manifold M as a kind of a tiny of a no dimensional synthesis. Every synthesis is just a C as as much to C. Right? Of course, this dimension C, we call that it's much lower than the manifold dimension. Right? This dimension C is exactly the same dimension as your open space. Right? So that means we have a huge number of synthesis which cover your manifold M. But however, every synthesis or every synthesis are as measured to each other. Right? So that kind of looks like a tiny of uncountably, uncountably very tiny. Now we may associate a side kind of type to each phase of such a simplex, simplex C. Report that this action, asymmetric action T, will preserve the types. We will call these two chambers, like T1C and T2C, which are which is so called I adjacent. If they, these two symmetries will have one column in one phase in COM, will share one column in one 
a phase of time of R. So therefore, we will, we will have a TM system of type W, where W is really a, a kind of type of this Cox group. We will call the rank W to be the rank of this TM complex. Right. So now we want to introduce another horizontal distance here in this, in this uh, kind of complex, right? Of course, we don't know this guy is a, is a simplicial or not. We call that. You should be careful. This guy is really a union of many, many of temples, but it may not be simplicial, right? We call that you yeah, simply commonly simplicial means you have two type of vertices. There is a unique one to join them. That that means simplicial. But in this generality, it's not obvious at all. It's a simplicial. But however, we will introduce a distance on this guy, namely for two points. In this set, of course, as I said, this guy, this C M T is the same as your manifold M, right? We may introduce a distance there to be considered that uh, to be the minimum of all curve, horizontal curves gamma to join this P Q, right? That means this gamma is always perpendicular to every orbit. It's always tangential to your section sigma, right? So this actually. This distance is very, very different from your original distance in your Riemannian manifold, right? Because the original distance you take a may not be perpendicular to your, uh, to your orbit. Right? So, okay. So, so now I wanted to use, I want, I wanted to use one. We should remark that this type of system we have, we get here may not be PRB. However, we know every need is a PRB. That's due to the work of a cast data right? The following theory we want to use is important for us. Actually, teeth give another characterization of a, of a, of the complex or type of system, whether it's a is a PRB or not. Means the theorem says that. If, I, if you have a connected and a simply connected TMO system of a rank at least four, which has to be a T theory. So we call two conditions. One condition means a connected TMO system. Here, connected just means, right, what's connected? Connected just means for any two points in this TMO complex C, M, T, you can always find a horizontal curve to join these two points, P and Q. Means they are horizontal in this topology. This, this is another topology in use from this horizontal distance. Right? That's different from your original manifold topology. Another is a simply connected, also for uh, refer to this uh, uh, this new topology from the horizontal distance. Right? So this theorem really gives you a kind of topological characterization for uh, this chemical complex, where whether it's a building, wherever the rank is at least four. So the rank is exactly the dimension of the of the chamber of the uh, simplex plus one. Okay. So now based on uh, connected the theorem due to book and Wilkin, we can prove the following: if uh, if the manifold is a polar manifold with positive curvature, then this guy is really a connected chamber system. Means if any two chamber complex there or any two point can be joined by a horizontal curve. So that is is a highly non trivial result actually. And therefore by this theorem, of course this guy is may, uh, is uh, now we know is connected, but it may not be simply connected. But we know from topology we may consider universal cover in this uh, in this new topology from the horizontal distance. Now we consider the universal cover for this guy of this guy, namely this C theta of M T, this guy will be a T theory if the rank is uh, at least four by T zero. Okay. okay. So now the really the key point is we have to analyze this one, try to understand this universal cover because we know that's a T building. Okay. So now we may assume this gamma to be this delicate transformation group which is acting on this universal cover. We know this guy is a T building, so therefore you may have a break object associated to this universal cover. Okay. So the key point is really we wanted to show the, the following. We wanted to put another new topology, namely a C topology, 
on this universal cover. Namely, we have to like pull back a sort of pull back the host of topology from your original medical topology to your universal cover, right? Because this guy is a, is a, there is a map from this C tilde to your CMG, but CMG is nothing else as C is equal to your medical M, right? So really on your medical M there are two topology. One is the host of topology. One is this horizontal topology. From this horizontal topology you get this C tilde. So now we want to, to, to go back to your host of topology to pull back, give you a new topology on this universal cover to show that this second topology induced from the topology of M will give you a topological building where this gamma, so that this that transformation group will be a compact transformation group which acting on this topological building. This is uh, like that the, the core, like the hard part there. And actually, I should point out a similar idea was also used independently by Alex Nichan to study polar formations on symmetric spaces. So now we have to use a, a, a important result of a bird's specimen, namely a topological spherical building. They proved that, namely, in our case, is C tilde MT, which is equivalent to the building at the infinity of a non compact symmetric space. Then we over K or oh, infinity. So, so therefore, this will give us that this guy, this topology building, let me see, tilde MT is equivalent to the unit to that unit sphere in the in the tangent space of this symmetric space and the identity. So therefore, we were we were bridging up from this universal cover from this guy some unknown things. We will get some sphere. We can prove this guy, therefore, is homeomorphic to a sphere. So that's very special to me. That's therefore. Okay. So, in particular, from here, we can show, we can see immediately this deck group has to be one of these three things. Because we know this deck group regarded as a discrete group. We call that we get this gamma from the discrete, a sort of a discrete, funny topology. But however, this guy we prove is a compact group acting freely on a sphere, round a sphere. Therefore, this has to be either trivial or S1 or S3. Right? So, so that means uh, in this two letter case, this guy are really just, uh, you regard this guy as a discrete group. You get it. Actually, for your original G action on your, on your medical M lift to an uh, action a covering action on this universal covering, then we have action there on the on the round sphere, and so that this deck transformation group is included as a, a normal subgroup where it was quotient to be your original group G. And moreover, this G hat action on your round sphere is exactly the same from some isotopic representation of a symmetric space for this T over K. So therefore, from here, we are almost, we are there, we can show a part of that. Namely, the building approach really tells us that in the irreducible, irreducible case, whenever this complementation is at least a three, we can get this result. Of course, there are some additional things we have to worry about. Namely, in the remaining case, either irreducible of the complementation is at least equal to two, or reducible one, including like fixed point not three case. Of, right? In that case, we have to use some other method to take care. Okay. So now let's move on to from positive to non-negative, right? Because in non-negative, as I mentioned, there are many, many more examples. Because whatever knee group and whatever homogeneous space where it gives you such a many a huge number of examples, right? So a conjecture we, we would like to address is a given and irreducible. Of course, I don't have time to uh, interpret what the irreducible means. A irreducible hyperpolar action, right? If the complementarity is at least a two, then we conjecture that this guy has to be something from homogeneous space. Has to be exactly you have a, a compact B group U and a compact subgroup K there, the M has to be equal to that homogeneous space. So this more than you can regard this as a, 
this conjecture is really asking a kind of a really geometric characterization of compact symmetric space of rank at least three. Because whatever symmetric space, whatever homogeneous space will satisfy this condition. So this is like another direction, converse direction we want to to address. Okay. So this is just a very brief. Maybe I don't have uh, so, so this is just very brief to, to say a few words. Now, we want to like to consider a reflecting group from a reflecting, namely, if you know, you know, a reflecting group in general is a discrete group in a, set, in a Riemannian manifold, right, in an uh, isometric group of the Riemannian manifold, generated by finitely many reflections where the section curvature is not negative, right? Here, of course, I reflection, I just referred to a new notion with column in one fixed point set. A mirror where I refer to uh, such a fixed point component of column in one. Right? So therefore, we, we proved that, joined with constant group, we proved that for whatever this finite reflection group acting on a Riemannian manifold with non negative curvature, you, can, you may have uh, this nice picture means the only space where where be a matched product of some standard standard states, which is either a simplicial uh, infinity synthesis or spherical synthesis, or this XI guys, these guys are or an extended space with all faces meeting together. So so yeah, I think the details can be found in the, my preceding paper. So a reflecting group here I call is locally indecomposable if this open space is not decomposable in this sense, it's not a product. Roughly saying that like open space is not a product, metric product. So a reflecting group I call is irreducible if, if this guy is neither decomposable or nor or mirror where it is. From here we make it so-called W rigidity here, we determine you that. A non negative curve manifold sigma with a co compact irreducible reflecting group down action has to be equivalent to, to be either this flat guy, Euclidean one, or torus, or this sphere and, uh, and the rear protective space. Right. Okay. So, in these two cases, we can say this uh, open space has to be either Euclidean or spherical synthesis. As a corollary from the above, we say that we know that any non negatively curved irreducible polar manifold of rank at least two is either hyperbola. We call hyperbola just means, just really means the section of flat space, a flat manifold inside, or deformable to a rank one symmetric space. So that means this, this hyperbola is important when you try to study this polar action on. Now, then we curve the space because this uh, this corner means uh, which is either you is irreducible means it's either hyperbola or regular one space, right? So, okay. So now I wanted to try to study this hyperbola one to for in general to give it a hyperbola G H on M. We may similarly have a chamber system similar to the spherical case. For which we assume, wait, for simplicity, this chamber system is connected, right? Because in the positive case, we have a kind of, kind of connectivity. But here it's not obvious at all why it's connected, right? But when the action is irreducible, we know that every chamber is at one Euclidean simplex. And then, similarly, because the TCP theory also applies to this case, by TCP theory, the universal covering of this guy now it's not a spherical period, rather than which it, it is a, a fine period if the rank is at least four, which is a huge. It's interesting to notice that this universal cover now is not a cat one space, rather than it's a cat zero space, where the next group actually acts of, of course as freely on it with compact quotient. So that means this gap has to be torsion free group. Because if you have a group acting freely on cat zero space, we have to be talking free. Right? However, this guy is a huge object, right? It's a infinite dimension in many sense, which is cat zero space, which is not locally finite at all. 
Okay, I can find the adverse theory from blue young kids. Actually, there is also uh, one, one adverse group over some valuation field K, which is associated to this affine building. Right. Right. And by completion, we know that in this situation, situation this K is nothing else. It's really a field of formal neuron series over one of these fields. It's a, it's a it's unity dimension object. So really, uh, this uh, universal cover will give you a fine building over this uh, huge field of a certain type. Okay. As you know, we can prove now that in many cases, uh, Romney says that whenever, uh, whenever we have this irreducible hyperpolar manifold, if the chip system is connected and, uh, and one of this type, namely type A tilde or D A tilde, this means uh, like a small group means that Cox group. Or this uh, one of these exceptional type, where the rank A, where A is at least four, then we can show that our original manifold has to be symmetrical space. It's very very special. You, you don't have a mask, even even more special than 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 homogeneous space has to be symmetric for these types. Yeah. So the, so the, uh, so finally let's uh, try to conclude my uh, my lecture by pointing out one example. How can you see this one? Now we consider the H1 loops, means H1 means the sub level norm. We consider in the loop group of, of the loop group in, in SUN, which acting on the Hilbert space on this uh, the loop algebra, right? You consider inside this the algebra of SUN, which is given by this gauge transformation. Right? Actually, this action is for this will, you can find this from the, like the work of turn, Julian turn. Actually, this section, uh, actually, the, yeah, the section actually are exactly constant loops with the value in the Cartan sub algebra T. It's a finite dimension as well. It's just the n minus 1 dimension, dimension n minus 1. So this is important. Actually, we, we know that this of the Hilbert space is really diffeomorphic to, to, to this path space. You consider this H1 path. From the interval to SUN, we're studying the path starting from the identity in the new group. Then, by evaluation at one another point at the interval, so then this polar action on your Hilbert space will project to the adjoint action of your SUN on either serve and it maps section to section. So, so this really means that the adjoint action of SUN on SUN either serve, the universal cover this guy. We know that this universal cover from our general theory, which is a kiss building, which is a sub building embedded inside this polar action in this uh, loop group for the loop group action. Right? Because this, this loop group acting on the Hilbert space will give you also a channel system, and our building is like a subsystem sub chamber system in, embedded inside there. But a priori, this, uh, this polar action for this uh, loop group acting on the Hilbert space B may not be <coughs> a piece of building. Uh, but however, this example does give you some, uh, indicate something. Means our universal coverage is somehow something looks like you, you get something from, from the loop group in, in, in this example, right? However, in our general theory, in the general theory, because we don't have group structure on the manifold, right? however, but however, that, but however, I think that the this theory does provide a tool you can we bring it up from from this uh, abstract, you know, unknown things to to some abstract object. So, so that's it. Thank you. Questions in the comments.
for the existence. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a very good question. Actually, actually, it's, it's, it's very hard to uh, to say. Of course, there are many many examples. For example, you make you make a construct that every uh, like every surface of hygienist, whatever, to be a section of some form of hygienist, just by taking like collecting some construction, whatever. You may have you may have a bunch of many many examples. But uh, I think uh, it's it's hard to say that if you have an uh, action which is a transversal, you have a transversal so section, right? Because in performance, people uh, normally are considered transversal things, not uh, instead of uh, perpendicular things, right? And uh, I think it's an open question. If you have a, a section, a module section, which is, perp which is uh, transversal to every every orbit, whether you can find some metric to deform it so that uh, this action is deformed. Yeah, so I think uh, at the moment it's really unknown whether you may have, have some, you know, some kind of topological, really topological result. But in low dimension, I know what consider here, he has a student in Yimpa, uh, in 1995 or 6, I think they, they get a kind of topological classification for simply connect the manifold with the point action in low dimension. Yeah, but I think that's a, that's a, that's really a very special case. Yeah. Questions? I have a question. Uh, so, in the study of uh, positive non negative curve manifold, uh, one difficulty lies in uh, uh, finding new examples. Yes. Uh, maybe give indication uh, what is the obstruction between these two classes. Yes. So, in your talk, you mentioned that. Uh, this rigidity result uh, put the co contracting new example very limited. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are any uh, indication directions where uh, you have any uh, candidate where potentially you can have a positive curve, manual not uh, in a known list. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, that's very good and very hard question. Actually, uh, as, as we know, uh, yeah, I think uh, the and the nature of generalization, I think polarity is really just kind of a high, high homogeneity generalization of common one. Right? Because if you try to construct a new metric using, using this group action, right? like whatever to construct the I star or whatever, or either positive or non negative, if you try to use this method in higher homogeneity, then the first, uh, first thing you might then try, try is using polarity. And so this rigidity result really just tells you that there is no hope if you try to construct a positive curve metric using polar action. However, you have, I mean the action may not, there are many other actions, even linear actions, which are not a polar, right? Even, even in cohomogeneity too, there are a lot of actions which are not a polar, which is, for example, but for that action, maybe there are some chance to construct some another example. Thank you. Okay. No more questions. Let's thank the speaker again.